Artificial intelligence is making many jobs obsolete. Money printing is out of control and the traditional family unit is under constant attack. In this video, I'm going to share with you how to prepare yourself and your family for the turbulent times ahead. Every civilization experiences cycles of success and decline. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We alternate the days between the people. It's pretty clear that the West is no longer as dominant as they once were. Western civilization is struggling to deal with the consequences of a breakdown in the traditional family unit and a monetary system that has seemingly reached a dead end or is very close to doing so. Debt in the US has now surpassed $31 trillion. The ratio of government debt to US GDP is now at its highest level in recorded history. The interest payments that the US makes on debt alone are now more than what it will spend on elementary and secondary education, disaster relief, agriculture, science and space programs, foreign aid and natural resources and environmental protection combined. The situation in the US is repeated in other Western countries, albeit with varying degrees of severity the U.S. being better off than many. Facing this indebtedness, the U.S. will either be forced to keep interest rates low so it can afford its interest payments, which will lead to more money printing and eventually hyperinflation, or the U.S. is going to be forced to default on its loans, which is a catastrophic economic event. That said, Western countries still maintain some undeniable points of strength, including a strong ability to attract talent from all around the world and their robust political systems. And by robust political systems, I'm referring to their ability to transfer power peacefully without someone having to die first. When we look at BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, which are often touted as potential successors to the West, they aren't really doing any better. The challenges of the West are all present in BRICS nations. Chinese debt to GDP is now at 80%. And their family unit is also decaying, as is evidenced by birth rates, recently reaching their lowest rate on record. In 2022, the Chinese population actually fell for the first time in 60 years. Not to mention no one really wants to live in China. Chinese people don't want to live in China. As a consequence, they are unable to attract global talent like the West is. Chinese leaders are above questioning and criticism, which makes them vulnerable and indeed destined to make serious errors in judgment that will eventually devastate their country. We've already seen this setup play out in history numerous times. So who is left? Who is left that has distinct political, economic, and social values? Only the Muslims. Muslim nations grounded in the wisdom found in the Qur'an and Hadith are currently undergoing the birth pangs of structural revolutions in their countries, and I assess them to be the most likely eventual successor to the West. However, the transition will be turbulent and uncertain, and this means we should be prepared. Here are some things you can do to prepare yourself. You may not be able to do all of them, but you can do at least some. As for that which you can't do, make sure you are encouraging your family and your loved ones to do them. The first is to root yourself in Islam by learning Arabic. In order to navigate through very uncertain times, it behooves you to arm yourself and your loved ones with the guiding principles of Islam. However, if you don't know Arabic, your connection with Islam remains fragile. Living in Turkey has made this abundantly clear. The only way some Turkish people were separated from their Islamic roots is by first separating them from the Arabic language. Root yourself and your family in Islam by making sure they are all fluent in Arabic. Without Arabic, you cannot listen, understand, and appreciate the Qur'an. You can hear translations of the Qur'an, but a translation of the Qur'an is not Qur'an. When I'm sitting in Jum'ah Khutbah here in Turkey and the Sheikh mentions a profound ayah in Arabic or a hadith, and then follows it with a Turkish translation, I can tell that a great deal of the meaning was lost in translation. The people in the audience that were listening that don't understand Arabic will never know what they missed. What's worse is that they don't even know that they missed something. To navigate the complexities of the road ahead, you need the teachings of the Quran and Sunnah, and to fully appreciate these teachings, you need to understand Arabic. 
My second piece of advice is don't build on shaky ground. Here, I'm referring to your choice of partner and your choice of location to lay down roots for your family. Seek out a partner who is an asset and not a liability. You need a partner that is adaptable and isn't high maintenance. Seek out the countries in the world that are going in the right direction before settling down. And by going in the right direction, I'm not talking about tall buildings. Going in the right direction means moving towards greater degrees of justice. You will only find stability where there is justice. To the extent that a country is characterized by injustice, the risk of laying down roots in this country increase, regardless of how tall their buildings are. Eventually, this injustice will catch up with them and it will be removed, and there is a risk that you lose everything that you built in that country. Time will prove that I'm right. My third piece of advice is develop your ability to make money independently from anywhere. Things are moving rapidly, and so is the rate at which jobs are changing and others are becoming obsolete. You need to be able to change industries, jobs, and locations and figure out how to survive and thrive quickly. This means you have to become adept at taking the initiative and working and earning money by yourself. And in today's world, that means working and earning money online. My fourth piece of advice is to buy assets. Whether the fate of modern economies and the US dollar specifically is hyperinflation, default, or both, one thing is clear. Governments are set to do a lot more money printing. So you don't want to be in cash. As central banks print more and more money, buy assets like stocks, gold, and a very select number of cryptocurrencies because their values will rise. PIF membership enables you to follow my personal investments and various strategies, link in bio. My fifth piece of advice is to diversify. In uncertain times, you need to make sure that you have a well-diversified portfolio. You can't be country-specific, sector-specific, or asset-specific. Aside from the obvious political and macroeconomic instability, we live in an age where progress is moving at its fastest rate ever, and relevant value propositions today will become obsolete tomorrow. So make sure you aren't putting all of your investing eggs in one basket. My sixth piece of advice is to have a strong passport and a strong network. It's more likely than ever that you and your family will need to change locations. So work on getting a strong passport. Get multiple if you can, so that you can get around easily if you need to. With a strong passport, you need a strong network. That classmate from Malaysia that moved back to their homeland after graduation, reconnect with them. You may eventually find yourself there, and it's immensely easier to go somewhere where you have a connection than it is somewhere you do not. I invite you to connect with myself, the personal profile that I am most active on is LinkedIn. You can find the link to my profile in the bio. So connect with me and try to establish human connections with others online in diverse parts of the world. Invest the time to do this. You'll never know when you need a connection. I don't mean to alarm you, just to prepare you. In truth, I am an eternal long-term optimist, but a short-term realist. And I recognize that the road to a better future is often paved with both challenges and opportunities. If you like, make sure to like, subscribe, because a lot of you still are not. Wassalam.